Okay, so here we are with a planter that we manufacture here in Tanzania. It's a zero tool planter. So we um, we uh, use a time planter, which is a, a good multitasking type of machine, very reliable, very durable, and uh, has many years of experience. We've had them here for uh, 12 years now in this country, and, and most farmers like them. So now we've built a small scale model. This is what we're going to be using as our flagship type of planter for the small farmers. We've uh, put precision meters on them that we, we bring from China. They're very good, very sensible and uh, robust meters that are easy to operate, easy to calibrate, and that's, that's what the farmers uh, want to have in this part of the world. It's a very simple machine. Uh, it's just one gauge wheel with a tire that you can find anywhere in the country, running onto chains and sprockets through gearboxes. And it delivers one seat at a time down through the uh, seeding tube here. So we use these uh, what called a wing T-point and they're a, a narrow low disturbance uh, tine with a carbide edge on them. They come from Australia, from primary sales. And uh, they've got a small wing here on the side which does uh, soil disturbance which creates a little bit more tilt in around the root zone but also reduces the draft or the horsepower required to pull the tine because it does a very small lifting action rather than a pure cutting action. So they're very narrow, they give a, um, a nice tilt in and around the seed zone, which is about that deep and that around, which just to get the roots going. And then you'll see this pipe coming down here. This is where we inject the uh, emissions off the tractor. So they go in behind the back of the tine and it blows it in through the soil profile where the roots are going to grow into the, into the emissions and into the carbon and the soot and the, and the nitrogen. Then we've got here, this is the seeding boot, which is slightly behind it. Now that runs on a parallelogram system. So it follows the, the soil, which so would be something like this. The tine itself does deep tillage, it tills below the root zone. And then this comes along and then uh, plants a seed at exactly the right depth, gauged by the press wheel. So that can go around corners and go up and down over lumps and bumps. The seed is then placed in the ground and then the press wheel here comes along on this particular planter, we've got a single press wheel, comes along and, and firms the the seed into the soil and closes up the trench so that uh, we've got good seed soil contact. Now this particular plant's got a single press wheel, we can put twin press wheels for beans or other crops. We have narrow steel ones we use on heavy clay soils. So they're very multitasking uh, types of machinery. This machine has brought together mixed experience and a lot of carbon farming techniques from around the world. The challenges facing the small farmer is cultivating his soil. He needs to hire a tractor to do that or do it by hand. Then he must plant, normally he does with a hoe and his foot. Timeliness, getting the seed in at the right time when the rain has fallen. And also making sure he has the seed in place. And then finally is the fertilizer to make sure that the crop grows. This drill brings it all together in one place and a very manageable, for people like Ima to run. He could be drilling the correct seed, which he could supply. You can see the zero till, you can see how the organic matter is being preserved on the top. It has been ripped so the seed can get down into that moisture and you can see the speed at which it plants. The emissions, we can't say too much about the emissions. We can't praise them too much. It saves him fertilizing. It then saves him the worry of having to store it. It then saves him the worry of how to spread it properly. These emissions are putting the fertilizer right above the seed. So this is the soil level here. That's just the level of the soil. And you see with the tillage depth that we're doing with that tine, it's quite narrow, quite narrow depth. And then we're about 20 centimeters into the ground, you see. So that's where the bottom of the tillage is. And the actual seed itself is sitting about there, which is about, in this case of maize, we wanted about uh, four centimeters into the into the soil so it's in the moist soil and then uh, it can germinate up through here and then the roots can then chase down into that nice moisture down there and, and get a good start on life. Alright so there you see it we have uh, our tractor kit in the field working, Ema's operating it here and uh, what we what we envisage and what we're, 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 we're taking forward now is that we want to expand this in Africa. We want to expand young people like Ema here to, to take on a, 
a contract with us um, to take one of these machines and go out into the field as a, as a, as a subcontractor to us and, and make a business for himself. You know, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a young man going in to feed his family, he, he's got a business ahead of him, he's skilled, and he's got really good equipment to do a good job that the farmers will give him uh, repeat business every year and, 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 and take a new approach to agriculture which is uh, not there at the moment. People, people run away from agriculture, it's too hard, there's no money in it, and they all run to town and they all sit in the cities and all moan and groan. But in this case, you've seen that this is a vibrant business. It's a vibrant business for young people like Ema to go into the, the communities and, and make a new, new impact into the rural areas. So the big limitation obviously for Ema and a lot of the young people that come out of the vocational schools and everything that are all enthusiastic for this is they don't have the money for this. And this stuff's expensive, you know. This is about $60,000 worth of machinery just sitting here and they don't have that sort of money. And the banks are not willing to lend money to these young people. So we have to look at new ways of financing this, new ways of, of uh, engaging other partners to come into these businesses and, and bring this whole sector forward so that these guys can take it forward, make a new business, pay off these tractors in about four or five years, pay them off, look after them under our guidance and, and uh, expand for themselves. You know, they become their own, their own operators with the guidance of field masters to, uh, to, uh, to improve the sector. And they, this can be multiplied throughout Africa. You know, this is a multiple uh, exercise, provided it's governed well, which is what we have to do, and educate these guys how to look after this machinery, how to plant the crops properly, the importance of repeat business, that they, if they do a bad job this year, they won't get the business next year. They must always give a good performance to the farmers so that they generate business for themselves next year and the farmer generates income that he will engage them again to come the following year. So it's, it's very important. It's a, uh, a new business and a vibrant business and it's a business that the rest of the world can actually have a, a solid view on. It's very easy to monitor. It's very easy to see the progress. We use technology and uh, it, it, it can really, really change the agricultural sector of Africa. So down to the business end of all of this, we need investors to come in on these bioactive tractor kits and invest with these young guys in Africa to the tune of sixty to $65,000 and bring them forward in because there's no other way for them to access the ways to buy these kits and take these businesses forward. So. Um, we invite anyone in the world who has a passion for agriculture, who has a, a passion to bring youth into the world of, uh, of business, uh, to invest with these young guys, invest with us, and, and uh, bring this whole, uh, whole industry of agriculture forward in Africa. Yeah, we passionately believe that it is business which is going to move Africa forward. And if we can get the ideas of business and the demands of running a business through Carbon Pharma, through these uh, tractor kits and these injector kits, we've got young entrepreneurs who will be out there improving the soil, planting correctly. And for farmers like Juma, who we've just seen, be able to put down a real depth of good soil, put the emissions in there, and he will have a crop which is three, four, or five times better than the one we just looked at. So Mick's talked about what we're looking for. We're looking for investors, we're looking for partners, we're looking for people to take this forward. Between us, me and Mick, we could probably do an area the size you're looking at. Exactly what is happening. Mick is investing in this area. With the help, with investment, partnership from other people, wherever in the world we can push this thing out you can make it bigger we can stretch it as far as the border of Tanzania then we can push it into East Africa then we can push it further and remember it's not only increasing the livelihood the decreasing the risk increasing the income farmers can make from their crops it's also putting more organic matter into the soil which is taking more carbon dioxide out of the air everybody wins So here are some of the Fieldmaster planters. They are being fabricated here by Fieldmasters and they are 
at the point of being delivered. Just been uh, loaded onto the lorry to be delivered to the lake zone of Tanzania. So there you have it guys. We have uh, an up and running business. We have things that work in Africa. We've got systems of farming that are track proven. All we have to do is now take it to scale and uh, ramp it up and create a win-win situation for the young entrepreneurs, the investors, ourselves and the world in general.